Will real estate ever return to normal? That's today's question. Wow, that's a loaded question, Lane. You know, what we have to do is say, what is normal? Yeah, exactly. What is normal? And I think everybody has a definition of normal. In my particular experience, at least of what's going on right now in the marketplace, it's not normal. But, um, and you've been doing real estate since 1988. Almost since Jesus was a baby. <laughs> Almost <laughs> since Jesus was a baby. There you go. Um, what is normal to you in the 33 years that you've been in real estate? You know, that's a wonderful question because, again, we can look at statistics all day long, but it's also what's happening right when we're in the trenches. You know, a normal market to me would be when our seller has the expectation they're going to place their home on the market, we're going to have researched the price that we feel is going to attract buyers and end up with an accepted offer in about 30 days or less. And from the buyer's perspective, I would say, from my experience, normal is when a buyer sets an appointment with me today, let's say, to see a house on Saturday. Mm -hmm. We're going to have time to get the family together, go out on Saturday and see the house. Yep. They're going to have time to think about it, maybe three or four days into the next week, and then know with some sort of assurance that when they put pen to paper, let's say up to maybe even four or five days after they've seen an offer, they're going to have a chance to get the, get the offer through. They're not going to be told, oh, my, wow, we've got 20 offers on the table, maybe up to three. Yeah. Now, for when you mentioned this uh, of a normal seller's market for um, receiving offers within the first 30 days, I know a lot of people out there are thinking, hmm, uh, things are selling within the first day. Things are selling within the first week. And it's average days on market in a lot of marketplaces, including in Orange County, is like six or seven days. It's one week. So do you think that there is ever going to be a marketplace where, where we return back to the realistic expectation of it happening in 30 days? That's a great question. I don't know. I know our predictions of what we're seeing, and Lane, I've got to hand it to you because you're so much on top of what the, the trends are and what's happening out there factually, is we're being told we've got another couple of years of this current run. So I would say the advice to our buyers in the short term would be you're not going to see any changing or any loosening up anytime soon. Yeah, there, there are a couple of things that have happened. Yes, we, we've been hearing 16 to 18 months of good real estate, but a couple of things have happened over the years as well. So um, the, the listings are a lot easier to be available for buyers. So whether you're looking on Zillow, Redfin, Realtor.com, everybody can see everything almost instantaneously, where that always wasn't the case. So now when they see something that pops up that checks off all of their boxes, they can go, they can call their agent right away and get in and take a look and write an offer right away. So all of a sudden now they're, that, that, that window kind of shortens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I do think, you know, we're in the lowest inventory market that we've, we've ever seen, that I've ever seen. Yeah. And I know that that's also a, an indication of why things are selling really quickly. But I think inventory will eventually go up. And when it goes up, I do think it, it will take a little bit longer for homes to sell. And I do think it might get closer to that, those 30 days as well. Um, and so I think there might be this little panic when that's happening as yeah. well. They're like we're so the new normal is yes. home selling within the first yeah. week. So the panic is, oh crap, things are on the market for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. That's that's a century. That's right. You know what, Lane, you've got a great point, and I had an aha moment there because back, and let's be honest, 20, 30 years ago, quote-unquote, we held all the cards. In other words, there was just this book that came out every two weeks and had the listings in it, and we had control of what that was. You hit a great point. Everything right now is instant. The moment a listing goes live, it's syndicated out everywhere. If a buyer is sitting in their bed you know, with their iPad at 3 in the morning, they get a ding and an alert, they know about that house. So you've made me realize, even if we normalize a little bit, time is still going to be compressed because no longer does a buyer wait for me to tell them, oh, these three houses came on the market this week that I want you to go see this weekend. They see it instantly. So those days have compressed. So I love what you've said. So I think that given that, I'm going to correct my view and say that we will never probably return to something that I was used to seeing several de decades ago just because of the way technology is today. Yeah. No, I think the average days on the market will go up because inventory is going to go up. And the reason, but what's going to have to happen is you're going to see a lot more price reductions yeah. because when buyers get that alert on a Tuesday, and they're going to go see it at open house on a Saturday. If it's not sold by that Monday or Tuesday, then chances are it was probably overpriced or, or the demand's not high enough for that particular home. And then they're going to have to do a price reduction and do that all over again. And it might that process might take a little bit longer. So I do see the days on market probably going up eventually, yep. but not necessarily because there's just less, I don't know, it, not because it's going to take longer, just yeah. because you're going to need to see price reductions for it to happen. But um, I'm a stats guy. 
Yeah, I know, I know you're a stats guy, and, and, and that's what I, we love about our partnership. We also sometimes call it old school, new school. And I think, too, we look at, say, that in the depths of the worst market I've ever seen in my career was 2008. Now, we look at Economics 101, it's supply and demand. The supply greatly rose because we still had people wanting to sell, wanting to get out, but the demand greatly shrunk because, you know, buyers were uncertain, so forth and so on. So, again, to your point, as inventories rise, that will equal out that supply and demand scale and give buyers a little bit of a reprieve, a little bit more time to shop and to look, and sellers will be have to, having to be a little bit more realistic, understanding I may have one or more homes I'm competing against and therefore have to be prepared to look at my pricing just a little bit more strategically. Yep, right now we have a supply issue, and we've had a supply issue for a long time. And, and because it's been a long time with the supply issue, that's what we're used to now. That's, that's our new normal. And it's going to take some time when that supply issue is no longer an issue to get used to that new normal again. Yeah. So um, one thing that I do want to look at, because I follow what's called the month supply of inventory. You do. I love hearing the stats. And so basically what the month supply of inventory is, is if no new listings came to the market, how long would it take to sell off that current supply? And historically, a neutral market where it, fa like where it does not favor the buyer and it does not favor the seller, it's neutral. It's between four and six months supply of inventory. Okay, so right now we're hovering around one wow. in Orange County. So that means if we use the low end of the neutral market, like inventory would essentially have to quadruple overnight for it to be considered neutral. Okay, now what happened in 2000, you know, 2008, 2009, yes, yes. Like that, that was uh -huh. the yeah. most recent recession, right? Right. And I have it right here. So the highest level of month supply of inventory was in April of 2008, and that was at 12.2 month okay. supply. So now where I was talking about how low we are, it needs a quadruple to be neutral. Basically, it was just double neutral. It wasn't quadruple neutral for when we were at that particular yeah. point in 2008. And this is for Orange County. It dipped uh, to five months supply in 2009. So in about a year, wow. it went from six months to five months. So, so supply was cut in by m almost 60%. Wow. Hey, for my non-analytical mind, can you just explain, there's one caveat always with that month's supply of inventory that gets me, because I think to myself, oh, 12 months supply, that means the average house is going to be on the market 12 months. But I know that's not true. There's a catch with the way that definition works. Yeah, so just because it, there's 12 months supply doesn't mean it's going to sit on the market for 12 months. All it means is how long would it sell? If no new listings right. came to the market, how long would it take to sell off the current right. supply? And some listings will stay on the market longer than 12 months, some won't. I know historically because we've been talking, we talked about this particular talk topic before we hit the record button here. Yeah. But um, you never had listings that lasted 12 months, so no, you were no. not in that particular right. category. But there were listings during that time that probably were oh. on the market for long than 12 months. No, absolutely. And I think that's the key to understanding that, as you said, that number is hinges on the fact if no new inventory came to market. So it's not for sellers to panic and think, well, you know, in a normal market, I have to expect my home to be on the market for a year. I think at any marketplace, if I might say from experience, is the motivated seller that understands where the demand is at the time can intelligently price their house, understanding the price is always the hook to generate interest from a buyer to put pen to paper. And when the negotiating starts, that's when it comes time to really tighten down the screws and see if the seller can get top dollar. But that's that's another video. Yeah, that's okay. But So basically from the peak of 12.2 months supply of inventory in April 2008 down to what's considered a neutral market of five months supply, that was about a year. Okay. Now it ticked up a little bit again. So in 2010 in the fall, it went up to about seven, but seven is just a little bit higher than what's considered neutral. So it was favoring the buyers at that particular time in the fall of 2010, but it wasn't favoring them by that much. Now we're in a marketplace that one, like I said, like it needs to quadruple for it to be considered neutral. It needs to, what, what, what's the word for 5X? But it needs to 5X. <laughs> it needs to 5X to get to where it was in fall of 2010. Yeah. So that's a lot of new listings that need to come to the market for yeah. it to be there. So it, is there anything that you see happening that would create, I don't know, an influx of inventory to get it to four times, five times of where we are today? You know what? I think that's a great question, and it's going to be what's in the in the minds of the sellers because everybody, you know, has twenty twenty hindsight. So generally, when we do see a peak and then a, sort of an adjustment, we have a rush of listings to the market because the sellers are fearful there's going to be even more of a fall, and they think, "Oh my gosh, I want to sell as close to the top as I can." I mean, you can talk to Warren Buffett, some of these stock gurus. It's always the same thing when stocks start to take a dip, people rush to sell because they they're they're fearful that they've 
they're going to continue sliding and they want to be as close to the top as possible. That would be that would be one thing. I would say if there's some something, you know, in the economy that shifts, I don't know, tax wise, you know, tax breaks, whatever that makes it more favorable, perhaps for people to sell earlier than they might have thought they would for downsizing retirees, et cetera. Um, if there was new, more new home builds where the uh, we could create the condo buyers moving up to their first, second homes and so forth, that would kind of help create that chain. I think there's many things that could happen, and there's a combination of them. Lynn, you made one really interesting point to me, and I had an aha when we talk about looking what returns to normal. And I know you're a stats guy, but I think is normal, what would normal be if we asked a buyer, what would, what would a normal market be to them? <laughs> Which buyer? A buyer looking today or a buyer looking five years ago because of... Buyer? Right now. Right yeah. now. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, right I, now. I, I think the buyer's normal right now is, okay, I got to jump on the listing like yesterday and write yeah. an offer right away. So that's what they're used to now, especially yeah. the buyers that are looking right now. I think what would be f comfortable for a buyer is if they were competing against one, two, yeah. maybe three yeah. other offers, not... 12, 14, 15, 20 plus offers, which, you know, I, I was seeing in the media just a few weeks ago that, oh, real estate's starting to slow down. There's a lot of agents that we network with around the country that are experiencing a little bit of yeah. slowdown in their areas. Well, here in Orange County, we are not experiencing no, that whatsoever. Like, I, every time I represent a buyer and I'm trying to submit an offer, I'm competing against double digit offers. We I'm are. competing against 10, 11, 12 offers listing we just have right now. 11 offers came in on it. So I, we're not seeing this particular slowdown yet. Um, but I do think a buyer would like to only have to compete against one, two, yeah. maybe three offers. So that would be a nice normal to have. But the point is, is there's no such thing as normal. Normal is always shifting. New normal or old normal. Like what really is normal? There's no such thing as normal. I think, I, I think that's absolutely right. And one thing that we've always counseled our sellers and our buyers is not to wait for what your definition of a normal market is, but look at what is your time in life. Is it time to turn the page to the next chapter of life? and make that home purchase, make that home sale move on. Then you hire the realtor that's going to be that trusted consultant, and you figure out how to work in this market to make it work for you. Yeah, it's impossible to absolutely time the market, especially right now when interest rates are really low, affordability is a lot higher, so the overall monthly payment between mortgage and insurance and tax, overall, relatively and historically, it's, it's actually pretty low. For me, in my particular situation in my home, just because I ha my home goes up or down in value, I really don't care at this point mm -hmm. in my life. I care because I picked it. I have a loan, and I have a monthly payment that's comfortable for me. It's comfortable for my lifestyle. I have a, a career that will, no matter what the economy is doing, will hopefully allow me to afford that particular lifestyle. And I know I'm in a home that I'm going to be that I'd like to be in for longer than eight years. And the reason why I'm using eight years right now is because historically, in the history of real estate, nobody's ever lost money in an eight years cycle. So right if on. you bought in April of 2008, when there were 12.2 months supply of inventory, you add eight years, which would be April of 2016, 20, like maybe early 2017, you would notice that that house that you purchased is probably about even yeah. where you were. So you did not lose money after those eight years. No, you're right and, on. and this last one that we experienced during that time was the worst one in, in 80 years. Yeah. So um, if we tell our buyers right now, have a payment that's like comfortable for them. Mm -hmm. How, if your careers are stable and you can see yourself living in this particular home, worst case scenario, eight years. So if your five-year plan turns into eight-year plan, you have to be okay with that. It's still going to be a fine time to buy. Yeah, it's absolutely right. And again, from the buyer's standpoint, just to, to recap what you said, Lane, it's understanding what's that monthly nut you're comfortable with. You want to drive into your driveway every night and say, I love to be home. I'm so glad and excited to get into my home and I can afford what my nut is, what I'm writing that check for, what I'm depositing you know, to the lender every month. And you, don't, and you don't have to worry about refreshing the page on Zillow so I can look at your Zestimate every day. You exactly. know what I mean? So like you don't want that feeling. You just, you don't yeah. care. You, at that point, you really don't care yeah. because you're happy with your payment. You're happy with the home. Yeah. You're happy with being there for a long period of time. That's good. So like that's, those are the buyers that are going to be doing really well in this market. I think you're right on. And then when sellers are also thinking what's, what, you know, what is normal, obviously the sellers right now are just feeling that they're in the catbird seat. They're, the, they're just winning all day long. How long will it last? You know, no one, want, again, wants to leave money on the table. But the advice we have for them is the same thing. If there's something compelling in your life that's saying it's time to move on to the next chapter, by all means, you really want to consider doing so. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, hopefully you got some value on will we return to normal and, you know, recapping, there really is no such thing as normal. There is normal no is always thing. changing. It's, it's new, always changing. It's old, it's current. So uh, understanding the definition of normal is abnormal. Absolutely. Well, my name is Lane. This is Scott. We love doing these Orange County real estate beats. We'll be back next week. Same time, same place. New podcast studio with a new topic. Thank you, Lane.